and a three and a two and a Sunday, June 2nd, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 511. And it's that time again. Yeah, it's that time to find out what's going on. So, uh, it, it, we're we're now doing this after the month is over. <laughs> That's our current trend right now. But you know, what can you do? Uh, if you guys haven't noticed, at least for those who watched the the live show, uh, we've been recording at weird times, uh, and that's because uh, I've been back to overnights. So. Uh-huh. so Unlike today, which we're recording later in the day uh, for reasons, uh, but uh, normally we've been, the last month we've been recording in the morning, and I get to say, say, good morning, because I've been up since like, well, seven o'clock the previous day. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. And, and then... And then uh, Damon and Gary just hate me to death because I'm being really loud and and everything. In this case, we don't hate you. We're just <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> disappointed. I don't, I don't know. Disappointed. I don't just know. Just trying to throw some shade. It's just annoyed. It's, just the, it's the phrase. It's the normal phrase. I'm not mad. I'm just I'm disappointed. I'm mad. I'm just. <laughs> um. So. Back to overnights, which is making Sundays like tricky, kind of, sort of, not mm-hmm. really, um, uh, because it's basically Sundays I just work, just work and sleep. That's pretty much it. Because I've got this, which is kind of work. I'm not getting paid for it. Well, kind of being paid for it if you count the Patreon. Um, but I'm not really getting any of that money. Um, and, uh, the, 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 I got to like after this and that 10, I need to be at work over more for overnight. And it's nice and quiet though. Of course, it's always great when a, uh, uh, it's, it's also great when, uh, uh, I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> this is what overnight does to you, uh, kids. So, um, yeah, so I'm back to overnight. Anyway, <laughs> there's not much really going on. It's pretty much, uh, uh, it's really just kind of front loaded because we take off, take anything that's, uh, the, the previous shift. Uh, was doing when they left so they'd basically mm-hmm. hand us off and then all of that stuff gets done by about like one o'clock if if that um depending most of these are baseball games which you never know how long Ooh. it's going um so when you so after that it's pretty much what i refer to as uh junk watching which is like there's really usually nothing we really need to do with them anyways and it's kind of like i don't really need to but we're required to because of these different factors so Hmm. it's like uh, blackout paid programs or something like that and everything is fine there's really nothing we need to do so it's just kind of like sitting there watching tv on 
several different channels all at the same time. So nice. It's it's, it's kind of chill like that. The only thing is, is that there's only like three of us <laughs> to watch all of these different channels from across the country. You're and there's re-airs. The it's re-airs of the baseball games, and some channels don't get their edits done on time, so we still need to do some some edits on those. It's it's crazy, but you know what? It, it's fine. It's actually rather chill. It, you can just kind of like sit there and hang out. So, nice. uh, which is one of the reasons why I said, please put me back on over the lights. I don't want the drama from the day anymore. <laughs> Oh no! But of I course, there vision. ends up being drama in the overnight shift. But don't get me started on that. That's mm. that's more of like a in companies the drama. I have a vision of you working at like the ESPN um, backup facility. Do you guys know about this? Mm. So no, oh. the place I go and I get my hair cut at is uh, hyper masculine. It's a barber shop and it has one, two, three, three televisions, and they all are on like sports channels all the time whatever so while i'm there i happen to see a video segment about the backup facility that's exclusively in new jersey apparently for espn that does nothing but like the replay stuff and it's got an entire staff this huge wall of nothing but screens and it's all the games that are simultaneously happening live and they have a whole like backup referee crew watching all the games for the replay moments when there's a call to help oh, the, the referees it's insane. Wow. I yeah, never even knew any of this happened. So this is what I'm imagining what Jeff talks about. Like he's got to watch all these television, like all these things like across the country. I'm like, oh, OK. Just, Just think know. of it this way. I have three computer screens and uh, I have each station about this big. Well, you can't even see it, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, we can't <laughs> because way, of how, how our technology works it, they're yeah. just like yeah. all small on the screen so i've got like i could have like 50 yeah. stations up on well i usually only put them up on two screens 25 per screen or actually i've been lately been able to do to have like 18 per screen uh which is a decent yeah. size thing so but when you have like <laughs> David, stop. <laughs> when you have like... I get it. Shrinkage. It's cold out. Anyways. I mean, like Fox Sports has like a ton of different stations based off of different regions. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, and some regions have like... There's like one region which has like 11 different stations. And it's God. just based off of your zip code. But a lot of the time they're playing the exact same thing. So you just like put those in the corner and like they're all doing the same thing. Like yeah, they're all on the same go. screen. So it's uh, yeah. But then there's there's some stations, some places like Minnesota, where I'm from, has one and a plus station, which is basically mm. their alternate feed for like alternate content and such like that. So, uh, so that's actually pretty nice, and it's my favorite whenever a Twins game is playing because I can watch that and listen to. You. My favorite baseball announcer uh, announced my favorite team. Nice. So, Philip asked in the live chat, is each screen the size of a credit card? Nope, smaller. Well, I mean, the actual screens, like the actual computer screens, are like 24 well, inch, but each, but each, each video. television stream is probably smaller than a credit card. So, you're not actually trying to watch for content, you're just watching to make sure that it's actually streaming? Yep, basically. Okay. Blackouts. Make sure the blackout's fine. If there's anything we need to do to edit the 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 program guide or something to match what the content is showing, and, mm. or any issues that we might see, which rarely ever happens, really. So. <sighs> it, Lovely. Yeah. So that's what I get paid to do. Uh, in addition to that, on my off days, which is going to change soon because we're almost done, uh, I've been playing D&D. &D. Finally, I found a D&D &D group. I'm so happy. <gasps> Yay! Congrats! So, well, I mean, we're doing it online. Uh, but the only kind of problem is, is that it's like about this time on Monday and Tuesday. Two, my two uh -oh. days off but also because i work overnight so i'm still like on my off days still on that sleep schedule 
Mm. So like doing stuff like everyday stuff ends up being a chore if possible. <laughs> yeah. So and we play for like four hours. <laughs> So by the time I'm no. done, a lot of places are closed, or it's really a, I don't really want to go. Just, so I've been really lazy about that. But uh, we're finishing up the current module, and uh, I've decided that I'm going to DM the next one. Ooh. Uh, and it's going to be the uh, Tyranny of Dragon set. So it's actually two modules from D and D, which okay. take you from level one to like level fifteen. Oh so my! It's a big old campaign. Wow. Um, and I'm skinning it because I have a word world in my head, and I want to introduce it to him. It's going to be interesting. Cool. Uh, and it's a lot of work. Uh, I need to grab myself some like notebooks. But I'm going to insist on being like, okay, we're doing this once a week, <laughs> as opposed to like two times. We can a week? go at the same time, but like it's either going to be Monday or Tuesday, and that's it. <laughs> Because, yeah, it can get, like, crazy, um, like, busy and stuff, and you front lose track of time. Like, we were playing today, um, my D&D group, and um, the idea was to play for a couple of hours while I, I, before I had to go to rehearsal today, and we got, like, we kind of got started, and people were starting to do stuff, and we were literally about to get to the point where we could actually really, really do something, and we had to stop, so. I mean, because. The- this this whole thing, I would I would still be okay with doing like Monday and Tuesdays again if I was not on the overnight shift, mm-hmm. because I would wake up at like eight or nine, get my shit done, play some D and D in the evening. Mm. Yeah, you know, it, I I it, I would more flexibility that way, but because I'm working overnights, things get a little bit trickier because mm-hmm. you know, potentially. Yep, 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 but. Uh, and then uh, I've been playing WoW. I think I've got a few more tunes to 120. And just everybody else is creeping up there. And I'm just like cycling through the rest of XP to get them up to 120. I'm really late because when did Battle come out? Mm-hmm. I think it came out in September. Yeah. It's creeping up on a year and I still haven't gotten all my tunes up to 120. So. But I also have extra tunes, so oh. that's that's taking mm. longer uh, on those. But that's my life. Very very boring. Oh, I did see uh, Avengers Endgame with Scotty. Nice. It was cuddly. Cool. I still I haven't seen it, and I feel bad. I feel awful. You're a As bad you nerd. Should. <sighs> well, yeah. I'm just saying. Um, well, we'll just get into it right now. So, um, what's been going on with me? Yes. Um, singing a lot. So, singing, the men's chorus is having um, our Pride concert actually this weekend. Like, not right now, but like the next following weekend. Mm-hmm. 6th or 7th and 8th, or 8th and 9th, or 8th and 9th. Yeah, that's so. Saturday, Sunday, eight, nine. Yes, yeah, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, eight and nine. Um, it's our Stonewall Transformations concert. It is a. Um, we're doing a piece called "Quiet No More." It's a um, several movement piece that has been written um, by several different artists for the uh, 50th anniversary of Stonewall. It is um, telling the story through music and then celebrating what has happened since then. Um, it's a very fun piece. Um, it's but it's a lot of work. We're actually using our music just because we didn't have as much time this time around to really um, learn it, learn it. So um, there you go. But it's fine. But it, it's it been a little crazy because that's just the first act. The second act we're then putting on, we're doing pieces um, by, for, and about um, transgendered, oops, wrong word, transgender individuals. Um, we're doing a song um, written by one our, our one of our um, members, and um, just it's but it's a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. Um, we're having fun with it. Um, we're doing um, a medley of songs from by Sylvester. If you know who that is, if you know you make me feel mighty real. 
it, well, yeah, it's, it's got fanography and everything. It's going to be fun. Um, and so, but that what it has meant is that I've pretty much had like a rehearsal every Wednesday. And then I've had, um, we've been actually doing a couple of extra rehearsals on top of that, just to kind of make sure that we've got it all down. We start hell week on Wednesday for the concert this weekend. So I'm going to be busy for a little while. Um, hell weeks are and always I, fun. Oh yeah. And to add on to that, um, I got to sing at a wedding on Friday or on Saturday. Um, a friend of um, two of our leather group members, um, Daryl and Don, um, got married on Friday or Saturday. I keep saying Friday on Saturday, um, and they had asked me to sing a song for the wedding. Um, I was a little surprised they asked me, but. They did. They were at. They pretty much had a lot of people in um, in the group kind of do something for them for the wedding. Um, one of our members officiated wedding. Um, her partner um, took pictures. Jim made their vest. Um, one of them was the host and also the best man for one of the members. Um, Daryl and Don. Um, another member did the flowers. It was it was a great little small intimate wedding. I'm at someone's home and it was really nice and the song went really well. And, and I was really happy for that. Um, yay for that. Um, yay. so congratulations, Daryl and Don on your, your nuptials. Yay. So all that to, all that's the good stuff <laughs> on to the, like, not so great stuff. Um, as I mentioned, um, work woes, uh, to put it bluntly, things have been, falling into place for a while now in regards to my job and my company that I work for. Um, there's a possibility of my position being outsourced mm. um, here soon. Um, so as I mentioned during, I think the pre-show, um, maybe during the show, I don't remember, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm on Indeed, I'm looking for other potentially work just to see what else is out there. Um, I've applied to a couple of jobs. I got a rejection for one already, but it's okay um but you know it's just going to be that whole thing of like trying to start i've been working on it for a while it's one of those things where the writing has kind of been on the wall for a little while so um we actually i go into work tomorrow morning yay and have the big meeting to kind of figure out what the next steps are Mm -hmm. um there's probably going to be a date there's probably going to be um, opportunity to go to the company that is the outsourcing. There's also a possibility of staying with my company because they may want a um, stay. They, they, everyone, any company that does this kind of always has a stay team that stays in the actual dep- division, um, actual company that they're not outsourcing to, to kind of keep an eye on what's being done. So. Mm. We will see what happens. Um, I am not, I'm right now not ruling out things. I've done some, like I said, I've done some applying for stuff, but I'm not making it like major priority right now. I have a lot of questions, which I hope will be answered tomorrow. um, And we'll see what happens. Um, Am I worried? Kind of, but not really like, I pretty find myself pretty employable, so I'm hoping that they'll I'll find something and we'll go from there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, right now it's been more worrying about my overthinking of what could potentially happen, like the worst case scenarios or mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. So that's where my mind is, and I'm trying not to do that. But you know, you do it. So, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it keep it somewhat positive because I don't think I need to worry as much as others. Okay, that's good. If that makes sense, but mm-hmm. yes. Anyway. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> Gary. So I have a question. Uh oh. Where the hell did May go? <laughs> oh, with that way. 
Apparently. Actually, I, yeah. Because um, it's already June. It's Pride Month. It's summer. Kids are out of school. Uh, like just. Yeah. yeah, it's it's messing with my head. Um, that means my morning drive will not have to slow down because of stupid school zones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, worked the month of May. Uh, I. I don't feel I have a good grasp on reality because I feel like I'm in a uh, wash, rinse, repeat uh-huh. kind of life at the moment. So I'm working 10 hour days, four days a week, and I have three days off, of which I spend one, if not two, of them with dad uh-huh. doing stuff. And I've kind of got Sunday to myself, uh, but not. Um, so, yeah, I mean, well, as an example, so like, this is not really a spoiler alert, but kind of a heads up for people. We're not going to have a show this coming Sunday. Damon's got the choir stuff, and I've got to take my dad out of state uh, for something. So Jeff gets the day off, um, and we'll do a, a flashback episode <laughs> for the beginning of the month, which sort of wasn't originally planned, but you know things come up. So, um, but that's what I mean. Like I just feel like all I'm ever doing is kind of the same stuff over and over again, and I'm not really like making some headway although yesterday felt productive i was able to sell my mom's table and kitchen table and chairs uh drop some stuff off for donation i was up very late last night going through a bunch of totes and through some stuff um you know so it's like yeah. i just feel like i'm in this constant uh cycle cycle okay mm-hmm. cycle's a good word yeah i mean and it's just like and it just like continues on and on um and i'm looking at the month of june um, on my Haunters Against Hate calendar. Um, <laughs> plug. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and I'm looking at the month and I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's, this is the beginning of the f- first of four full weeks and then mm-hmm. like, it'll be July already. So, um, yeah, I've got something coming up potentially with work towards the later half of the month that I'll get into more later. Um, but, yeah, and I mean, and I guess I feel like I feel like worn down because I've just got crap going on. Like, so my mom's car, uh, I had to move it off of the property that she was no longer living at, which is fine. Mm-hmm. So I move it in front of where I live on the street because it's public accessible parking. There's yeah. no restrictions, and I come home like Wednesday night, I think, from work, and I noticed that someone like took what looked like a grease pencil and wrote on the windows of the car, and I was like fuck is that so i go and i look at it and it's like a date and a code and something so i look under the windshield wiper and here there's a card that it had rained in the previous days so it's like i'm reading it and basically it seems a local police department has listed it as an abandoned vehicle and i'm like all right it's not abandoned why the hell are you writing on the car like (laughs) did you bother to contact anybody about this so, and I'm kind of irritated because what I can't figure out is why this got started because most likely someone had, would have had to report the car. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, who the hell would report the car except for maybe my landlord who already knows because I told her like on the second morning after I had moved the car, she asked me about the two cars that were out front. And I said, well, I don't know whose car that is, but that one's my deceased mother's. And I'm waiting for the bank to call me that they're going to come claim it. So I'm thinking <laughs> that's your answer. So I don't know. Yeah. So I end up having to call the police department and be like, hey, so I got this thing under the windshield, blah, blah, blah. Says, like, you know, if the car doesn't get taken care of, it's going to be towed. I'm like, so I explain the situation to the dispatcher. And he's like, oh, well, he's like, well, what's the officer's name and badge number? So I give it because it's on the little card thing. Card. And he's like, well, they're not working today, but I'll have them get back in touch with you, which I haven't gotten a phone call yet. So I don't know if they're like on vacation or what. But and then I got a letter. So then my mom's gotten two things in the mail, certified that have to be signed for. But oh, that's right, she's not alive. Dead. So <laughs> right. So she's it's dead. like, how do I go to the post office to get them? So I go visit the USPS website, and it doesn't say anything beyond if you want to do a change of address for a deceased individual that you can do that, but that a death certificate will not be legitimate paperwork to present for a change of address. Wait. Hold on. Is that wait? Uh, no, I wait a minute. I I think I can understand. 
it's not the death certificate. They need to have like the documentation of executor of the state or something like that. Right. So and I have so it's the, the death certificate itself right. won't do it. You need to be like, okay, they're dead. I mean, but who is who is who legitimately allowed to, allowed to do this? Right. So. I mean, They've technically so, changed addresses from well, like, David, right, right, right. Think about, think about this. Like, think, about, think about this. If you and your siblings were fighting and you happened to get yourself a copy of the death certificate, you could go to the post office and be like, I need to get so and so's mail. But you are not actually the executor of the estate. Uh, so I think the post office is like, we out. No, nope, we're not getting involved in all this drama. Like, whoever's the executor, they get access to the mail, not nobody else. So you just can't come up here and be like, I got a death certificate. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, a okay. lot of people you I can't get, get many it. copies of the death certificate <laughs> right i kind of yeah i kind of get it but i also what i'm irritated by is the website does not explain what to do in this circumstance when it's certified mail it doesn't say how you get to sign for mail for a person who's not around anymore true so i go to the post office i take the last will and testament that lists me and a death certificate just as backup of course. So here's here's a little education for all y'all. The U.S. postal system, unless it's restricted as certified mail, anybody can sign for it. Oh, actually, technically, that is correct. So, certified so you didn't mail... need any of this, <laughs> right? But I don't know that. So technically, if Jim has something that comes at certified mail, Damon can go pick it up and sign for it. They just yeah. need something to sign, yeah, and show ID. Yeah, you probably have to have the. Like if it like if you weren't there when they picked it up, they usually get you get a little tag or receipt indicating that you weren't there. So please pick it up and um, you go because it's been one of our. <laughs> so with my job, we tend to send letters like you know job refusal or um, you failed to return to work, so you might be fired here soon. Um, letters to people. And we send it regular mail and certified. We always send it both ways because mm -hmm. our idea is that it will somehow get in your hands. If you refuse the certified letter, you're technically still getting it because you're getting it through regular mail. Um, right. So you can say, oh, I, don't, I, I never got it. No, 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 no. We send it two ways. So maybe you said, maybe you thought you didn't get it because you signed it certified, but reality is you got it because it showed up. But the other part of that is that Say you're living with someone, partner, girlfriend, fuck boy, whatever, right. and they sign for it. That is technically um, qualifies as you receiving the letter because someone technically signed for it. Right. Um, it's not happened yet, or I don't believe it's happened yet. But we, I think we had one case where they were claiming false identity on the certified mail, but it was like, well, someone signed for it that lives in your house because they don't just give it to. Like your neighbor, if it, the certified goes to your house right. or your apartment, and you have to, someone, ha if someone's not there to sign for it, they will leave you a, a note. Correct. A notice. So, yeah. So I had to go do that. Like, so then I got to sign for the two things. And one of them is from the police department stating about the vehicle. And then if I don't contact them, then it will be towed. Blah, 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 blah. Ah. Which it's like, yeah, but I already fucking called. So. <laughs> So well, I still haven't. Well, I don't have an update on. I don't know to, what's happening. To be fair, they could have sent it before you called. No, they 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 honestly must have. That's the whole thing, though. And what irritates me is the date that they wrote on the car window was like a week prior to me calling. So technically, by the timeline, it should have already been towed. So I'm not really sure how this whole thing worked out because the date listed is before I even left to go to Cincinnati, but I didn't notice hmm. it until days later. And I'm like, well, how the hell, like. I don't understand how that was possible. But anyways, uh, so I'm just frustrated and I very just... irritated about this whole thing because I'm like, so like I need I have to call the estate lawyer on Tuesday and be like, I need an update. Like, is the bank taking the damn car and when are they taking it? Because now the police department is like kind of like giving me grief. My landlord wants it gone. I don't necessarily, um, you know, have any interest in it. Mm -hmm. and, and it probably needs to be it, it's probably not paid off, right? Uh, no, the car was paid off oh. years ago, but it. it's listed as an asset on a loan, and so I can't do anything with the car. Uh, I haven't even tried to take the title for the car, because why Why transfer the title to me when I'm just going to turn around and it's going to go to the bank? Just like, just 
I'm like, don't even get in the middle of that. Just let the bank come. So it was, it was used as collateral. Correct. Something else. So. Right. Towards a loan. So it's like, and that's the other thing is I'm getting all this. I'm still getting mom's mail and I need an update from the lawyer because they were supposed to be sending this letter saying basically mom's estate was insolvent, which means there is no money. So nothing's getting paid, but I'm still getting notifications about past dues and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and then the apartment company, the manager oh, yeah. company, sent me a letter that really pissed me off that said that not only are we not getting the security deposit back, but we owe them over $1,200 because of replacing the carpet. And I'm like, oh, really? And what bothers me about it is there's like no documentation. It's just an invoice. No, yeah, just an invoice for replacing the carpet. Like, no proof of anything. And because we didn't do a proper walkthrough, there's like no documentation. So, yeah. So I vented to the lawyer via email and was kind of like, oh, by the way, because everything I get there, like, just send it to us. So I scan it, send it off in an email. So the lawyer was like, yeah, they're not going to get anything. I'm like, and there's part of me, it's like, I realize that, but that's not the point. If the part is the, like, like, what? No. I know. I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but she's fucking dead. Like, like, you're they not don't getting care. anything. They don't, they don't care. Zero. They don't care. Like, they don't care. It's just the thing. Like, like, it oh doesn't matter. God. Like, come on. They will try to oh. get whatever they possibly can. Good, Good luck with that. I, I understand. I, I understand your frustration. I've been through mm. it. It's, <laughs> it is horseshit. It's not something anybody really wants to go through, but you know. But that's why I'm talking about it. So anybody who like listens or watches, they understand like this is kind of the stuff that happens, you know? So I guess that's really why I like, I just feel like life is just a non-ending cycle of shit. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and it's now the storage unit has been over a month. So we're into the second month can only afford that for so long. Um, Mm -hmm. Life insurance check hasn't arrived, made a phone call last week and was like, Hey, what's going on? Oh, well, I'll have to look into that. What is there to look into? So now it's going to oh. start getting ugly because <laughs> y'all owe me a check. Y'all sent me a, a letter that said you confirmed that you owe me a check, and yet I still don't have wow. the check. I would like to be able to pay off the debts that have been created because of all this. So, Oh, my God. So, yeah, like that's the thing. So random aside, sorry, before we move on, because um, it just I re- I'm just remembering it. Um so I got a letter from my mortgage company that indicated that I no longer had homeowner's insurance. What? Wait, what? Like, no. So I go on to my insurance company's site, which indicates that it's supposed to be paid by the mortgage company, and they just haven't gotten paid. So I'm like, okay, well, let me call the mortgage company to figure out what the fuck's going on, because... Right. Hey, you have, this has been like, escrowed. Yeah, this is escrow. So I'm paying like, you to pay them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm paying you to pay them. So why haven't you paid them? Get this, okay? So <laughs> I call oh, on comes. Thursday to my um, the mortgage company, and I talk with a very nice woman. Thank you for calling. She was very sweet. Um, she goes like, "Yeah, we 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 are aware, that, and you are correct. Like you are you are paying." basically paying for your homeowner's insurance through your through your mortgage payment, basically. And she goes, but this is what happened. We sent the bill, essentially, um, over to, though we sent the request, no, we got a request from the mortgage, the homeowner's insurance about the bill being due. And we, we reached out to them to get the information so that we can pay it. Basically, how do we get the money to you? Granted, my insurance company has not changed since I bought the house. So, but my mortgage company has. Anyway, so I'm like, okay, so you guys just need to talk to each other. So I have to go and find the original like documentation. Fortunately, it's on my phone of who I to sign, signed up for, for my homeowner insurance. So I can give them a contact number so that they can call the mortgage company or the, homeowner's insurance to figure out who they need to pay. She k- puts me on the phone a couple of times to like get it all taken care of. And she does get it taken care of. 
I'm going to check here on Monday or Tuesday to just make sure it all kind of has cleared through. But it's just like, why did I get, fortunately, I only got the, the, the notice from the mortgage company, but couldn't the, the mortgage company have just said like, hey, like, this is what's going down. We don't have homeowner's insurance for you. I know we're supposed to be paying it, but this is why we're not paying it. Because so you refinanced with a new company and no, I did not. Part of... Oh, I did no, it was a transfer. With another wasn't it? Yeah, they paid. They so the all... information didn't transfer more than likely. And that's the part that like gets having on my worked last in month. the mortgage mortgage industry. <laughs> yeah. And it just like like anyway, so it just it, it was just a, a frustration, a little headache. That appears to have been cleared up. Hopefully, I'm going to check like again in a couple of days. My issue is that it the insurance company says that if it's not paid by the 16th or 15th of June, that it's going to cost more or whatever. And I'm just like, but it's paid now, right? You guys should got that, should have that. So we'll see. Actually, continue. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things that you you just kind of think to yourself, like, why isn't this already taken care of, or what the hell's going on? I mean, and, and I I feel for people who go through difficult situations, like with what I do for work, and people like I had someone. Oh, that was another fun thing that happened this past week. On Friday, I got mf'd for the first time by a caller. Ooh, look at you. Yeah, it wasn't a goal, just for the record. <laughs> like, I've already been there, like, past the probationary period. That was not my goal, but I was not prepared for a woman to, like, lose her temper and call me a motherfucker and hang up on me. So, And that is abnormal. So that is not the type of environment that, these, that this work happens in. But she was upset about the process and how it was being handled. She was argumentative. She disagreed with me about how it needs to be handled mm -hmm. because, understandably, she had been transferred from the location that I told her she needed to speak to. Mm. But she knew better. Mm. <laughs> Motherfucker. Click. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, and so and what's funny about it is it was kind of like a badge of honor in a way because then I turned to Danielle, my work wife, to my right, and I was like, I just got MF'd. And she was like, Diet. She's on a call, so she's trying not to like laugh. Because <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> she just she just please? held out your hand for a, her hand for a high five. <laughs> no, because then the, the woman that's on the other side of her, like even she turned and looked at me like, what? Like, <laughs> like everybody was like, dang. I was like, yeah, no, it happened. I was like, I am rather pleasant most of the time, but welcome to the soul sucking lifestyle of call centers. Well, my thing is like, like you got to be careful. You come for me, you best be prepared. <laughs> so careful, she... Gary. Gary's an expert when it comes to shade. <laughs> well, it wasn't shade. It was just it was this whole situation. You know, she she explained from the very beginning what was going on. I tried. I parroted back to her, like I repeated what was being said to show that I was actively listening. So I was uh -huh. aware of what was going on mm -hmm. and then explained to her based on the circumstances that she described that she actually needed to speak with a different department because that was for another state, not the state that she currently was reaching. And she was like, no, 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 I already talked to them. I remember. Like, and she just goes off of this whole thing and I was like, okay. Like, and so I tried explaining again that <laughs> unfortunately, whoever she had spoken to was incorrect and that because she was doing it for this other state, well, yes, she was in the state I'm representing. Like they handle things differently there, but, but like, you know, I even did some extra like probing questions, like trying to make sure like I'm not misunderstanding the situation. Uh huh. And it just was not to her satisfaction. So she, it, it escalated very quickly. She escalated. I didn't escalate nothing. Like, I did it very simply and been like, look, bitch, but I would like to keep my job. So, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was not a happy camper about the way she just, like, <laughs> God, I'm uh, like, okay, I am awful. Thank so you. I just, so that was like a milestone kind of thing that happened. And I was like, okay, okay, whatever. And then I got paperwork for 
uh, benefits and some other thing, which eh, it's okay. But okay. I, I just have all these things that I want. I don't want everything to go away. I just want things to be like more you want it done. Over well, with? I want things to be more predictable. Like I'm looking for outcomes that I think are supposed to happen, not like cars that could potentially be towed and checks that don't come. And you know what I mean? Like just yeah, things that aren't going. And it, it's just very frustrating. You want everything to finally resolve. Yes, in a way. So, I mean, because I know that there's more stuff to come and I, you know, I still got to get myself into therapy because about once every other week or so, I'm having a dream about guilt about stuff. So anyways, it's fun. Mm. It's so this is, this is, this is how fucked up it is. Cause I'm just going to spill the tea. So I have a dream. Jeff, what are you doing? I'm preparing. Okay. So I have this dream where I have to reverse things that have been done. And by that, uh, I, I have to take my mom's things back out of storage. I have to get her apartment back and put everything back to the way it was because she's not really gone. Oh, Lord. Right. Lord. But then I wake up and I'm like, oh, no, this all really happened. Yeah. So, like, that's God. just the dream. But the fact that I keep having this very similar type of dream over and over again is messing with me. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I need to work through this. I got to figure out like why I keep, <laughs> gotta... why I have this. And I think it's just being driven by guilt about something most likely because uh-huh. how things ended. <laughs> and, you know, uh-huh. so. and then I couldn't figure out like today, like I was just like yesterday I thought it was a good day, but then like today, I don't know. I think it's because also I was going through some stuff last night and then I realized it's been two months as of yesterday. Mm. So this is going to be a thing for a while. Mm. Uh, you know. So that's that was where I was like, where the hell did May go? Because I just don't really have much recollection of the month beyond, May? oh, that's right, May? Mother's Day without mom and then went to cincinnati for memorial day weekend getaway which was actually shortened long story so (laughs) and and then also like um just as a a sidebar thing um so people have been kind of asking about like what's happening with df and the committee's on not a hiatus but this always happens every year like we chill out a little bit we did the feedback survey um thank you for those that filled it out and gave us you know the feedback there was some most of the things we were not surprised by, we kind of knew uh, about some stuff. Um, but, you know, we, we need to get the ball rolling to the next year and talk about, like, dates and the theme and that kind of stuff. But it's a process. So it's just... Yeah. I feel like I just don't have enough time to get things done. And I think part of it is is because I'm working 10-hour days, I feel like the days that I work is nothing but work and sleep. Mm-hmm. And then... The day, like the one day off I have during the week is to be able to take dad to go to grocery shopping and get other things done. But then I feel like that's what I do that day. Mm -hmm. So I'm still not getting time to get things done. Basically, kind of what I'm doing in a slight, in a much different sort of way. I was going to say slightly, but then I'm like, no, and it's very different. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's like, and yes, we we make the choices that we do, but Mm -hmm. I can now understand why when there are siblings, a handoff can be incredibly helpful. Yeah. Because I could say like, Hey, can you go help dad like on Saturday and you know, and I'll take Tuesday or can you take this Tuesday or, you know what I mean? And like, yeah. Balance some of that stuff out, you know, with that. And I am looking into like, there's a grant with um, a local Parkinson's group that will, if I get it awarded, it's a couple hundred dollars to like have someone come in and help with stuff. But it's, I gotta convince Dad that he like will be okay with having someone come and help and so, mm-hmm. so just yeah yay. Anyways. Anyways, should we go on to uh, feedback? Yeah, <laughs> Philip, he's in the live chat. So your mom goes back to you and your dreams to nag you from beyond. No, she's not nagging me. It's really strange. It's not that she's actually there, but it's this whole like weird dread thing. Like, oh my god, what have I done? I've got to reverse everything. 
It's like, but no, she's I'm, not actually dead. And then you're like, no, she is. No, no, no. But right. But then I wake up and then I remember because I kind of relive through my memory. Like, oh, no, I was there. Like, <laughs> at her you bedside in the hospital when she passed. I was mm-hmm. there like when I signed off and did all the stuff for the cremation. I said my last goodbyes. I have her remains. Like, I mean, it's done. It's not like this is a dream fantasy and I'm just making <laughs> it up. But maybe that's how my brain's trying to process it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right. That being said. Let's get into the feedback. Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, so in terms of us for Facebooks, uh, we had some likes, uh, and the reason why I say that is because I recently saw an article that said, uh, less and less people are engaging with Facebook anymore. <gasps> Shocker. Imagine that. Hmm. I wonder why. Everything, everything has a cycle and they begin lots of bad press and everyone are being tired of being manipulated. Hmm. Anyways. So for those that use Facebook like all of us I do as hosts <laughs> we want to thank you for liking us on there uh, we want to thank Stephen Popachek Gabe Horner and Joseph Levin so thank you for liking us on there over on Instagram which by the way is owned by Facebook in case you didn't know we got three new followers Haunt Cub Miguel A. Maldonado and Kaka 2020 so Nice. Thank you for following us on Instagram. I'm trying to get back to making that regular thing. Letting people know about when the episodes post. Damon. You're on mute. It doesn't until I get my phone back. And there we go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Over on YouTube, we got a new subscriber. <laughs> Remy... Two one six eight nine. Welcome. And over in the Twitterverse, uh, I get the hard names. Uh, I got. I am Mr. Dex B, Cody Voss Triple X. <gasps> Ooh. Send nudes, please. Five TJ <laughs> Bears, Pooh Bear twenty eight eighteen, BKT nineteen eighty six, and Hacktech underscore. Thank that would be Pooh Bear twenty three eighteen. Twenty three eighteen. Uh yeah. Mm-mm-mm-mm. He said twenty eight eighteen. I just wanted to correct that so they yeah. didn't get offended if I, they listened. I can't read. That's where I, why it ended up being hard. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't get the hard ones. Like oh. This. oh yeah, Cody Voss. Hello. Oh, that's right. Him and his boy, yeah. His I was gonna say you know so... who Cody Voss is on Twitter. Oh, that's right. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh. Okay. Uh-huh. Sorry. <laughs> uh-huh. Of course, I know who that is. I probably um, shared a video or a picture or a hundred of both of them. Um, <laughs> Killed some babies. Anyways. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Horrible slang joke. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Gary, uh, so. What did we do during the month of May? So in the month of May, we did this only a month ago. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly Uh, four weeks ago. Yeah, we did a what's going on for the month of April, uh, which was the big, long extended, hey, this is the shitty April we had in 2019. Uh, Then we started potentially a new series, which is called What Is? And we discussed self-love, which I think was actually a good... Uh, topic show that we discussed and then uh, that led to are we selling out which I still have issues and thoughts about just for the record <laughs> uh, yeah but yeah Anyways. that may be we may need to repeat that episode or I, not repeat it but have a part two yeah um, I, um, okay uh, can you do that like sometime when I'm not there <laughs> well sure I <laughs> The only reason is because now we've actually entered the month of Pride, so oh, I'm seeing which, the stuff that's out there. Which means saw... all all of the, the the product companies are like ka-ching! Right. I have no idea. What did I see the other day? Who was selling Pride stuff that I was just like, what? Why the fuck are you selling Pride stuff? Why anyway, not? doesn't matter. Anyway. Well, 
But I saw something on Twitter today that made me laugh that someone posted. I think I retweeted it uh, on one of my accounts, but it made me laugh because it was like, so it's from SpongeBob and it's, Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what the characters are. Krabby's one of them, I think. I don't know who the other one is, but they're like, there's ones being a reporter with a microphone. And so the one says, why are you selling all these things with rainbows on them? And then they put the microphone in front of the other one and they're like, to make money. (laughs) because <laughs> it's gay pride month or something like <laughs> welcome to being uh, in a capitalist society right so we are I living mean. in a material world and yeah. i am material anyway and we can't afford the rights uh yeah, <laughs> so. <laughs> and then uh we did honesty versus truth mm-hmm. um, which is okay. which is kind of another what is well, in a kind way, of but, it's adjacent, it, maybe but it's still... it is. Well, I, I mean, everything technically that we cover is related to each other somehow, I'm sure that but it was but the thing I was thinking about is that we're moving into the month of pride and everyone's like all about being proud and being, you know, so it's like, are we being honest with ourselves? You know, Happy all that pride. Kind of stuff. so Happy I will say that, I will say that I am glad to see the amount of stuff that's coming out about Stonewall and the recognition of the trans community individuals that were involved in the Stonewall riots that created mm-hmm. that what is considered like one of the landmark things that be were contributing to the beginning of the gay uh, LGBT movement for freedom mm-hmm. and equality. So um, I think it was Mayor de Blasio. Uh, there was a ceremony in which they said, uh, which they're dedicating statues that are going to be in Greenwich village representing um some of those individuals and there's been some other stuff. So yeah, I'm really happy about that, with all that's coming about. So that's what we did in the past month. This month, uh, we'll get into some pride things, obviously coming up. Um, but summer's here. So, ah. all right. So yeah, after all that seriousness, let's, uh, look at some dick. Uh, I didn't look at anything. Uh, so, <laughs> Damien, what do you got? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I actually have two things and I'm going to talk about, um, so the first one is, I call it cockeye kink harness. And this is from, um, uh, my friend James Lee, who was the previous IML winner. So IML 2018. And he is with two wonderful looking men um, who either gave him this harness or created this harness for him um, for um, his win as IML. Um, so awesome pictures of that. Um, Cockeye Kink is a, I've not heard of them recently, so I'm thinking maybe they're fairly new. But if you look at the bear on the right in the picture, uh, that did he not Mr. do porn before? He did do porn. Okay. That is Mr. Um, that is Claire. Um, Claire Bear. Claire Bear. But you probably know him better as Steve something, and his name just left my head. Oh, his name just left my head. I don't think it's Curtis. Steve Ellis. Thank you. Ellis. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um <laughs> porn website um, <laughs> <laughs> that I was looking at just to like wow. remember the name. Um, mm-hmm. but yes yeah, so Ellis uh, Mr. Claire Bear is our um, very handsome man he's the one the, the sort of salt not salt and pepper cinnamon sugar when they're a redhead um, cinnamon sugar bear on the right um, very fun their harnesses look really nice and I just wanted to kind of spread the love for them because it looks really good, and Claire has been one of my personal fantasy favorite guys to fap to for years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would still would. It's just everything. Anyway, moving right along. So mm-hmm. on that note, to kind of add a little bit more um, fun to this show, I have um, one of our other fan favorites, uh, Mr. Barbelli Crusher and his hotel selfie. Mm-hmm. I so, mean, there's not much to say about it because uh, it's beautiful no matter what. Exactly. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lovely white bathroom. I mean, you know, there's a little <laughs> water bottle in the corner. It's a towel. Toilet looks clean. Toilet's Two sinks in the cock and the uh, nose. It's, well, it's yeah, that too. Nice belly. Pink it's bone. it's ironic that you picked this picture because I almost picked his actual post from today. Oh um, yeah, as my tweet, but I decided not to. Not knowing what you would pick, Damon. So <laughs> double checking, I was like, "Wait, did I pick? No, I picked something else." Uh, I know he's been posting some of his older pictures as well, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, um, he's you know, well, uh, he's just so fucking adorable. And um, I remember when we had him on the show, but even now, it's just like he's just so freaking cute. Like, who doesn't like Mister Barbelli? Yes. So those are mine. Mm-hmm. Gary. Uh, so I picked uh, a newcomer, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> to my Twitter. Uh, and the title is No Work Means No Clothes. And uh, it's at Rugger Fawn. That's F-A-U-N. Um, he is a rugby player. Mm-hmm. But he's a long-haired bear. I mean, he's a hairy dude. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, he's a longer haired gentleman with a beard and he's quite yummy and mm-hmm. has a shirt that he's taking off and he's not wearing anything else. And I mean, if I don't look at his head, uh, he's absolutely gorgeous, but I, I I'm huge. Not a you don't have a hair. thing for it. Like See, that it's a, at long hair to me is actually a turnoff. <laughs> uh, I am. So, so that is fine. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's, <clears throat> He 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 yeah. is gorgeous. If that's her thing, great. Uh, and he he does have a great body. Jeff doesn't have him, so me and Gary, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> all <laughs> yours. Not yeah. everybody is everybody's cup of tea, and that's just yeah. perfect the way yeah. it is. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's just not my cup of tea. That's all. I'm, I'm, Although I will say, I'm not I, yucking anybody else's yum. I'm just saying it's just not my yum. You're yucking your own, not yum. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Gary, you were saying? No, I was just, so I was looking through his Twitter and I was scrolling through and then I was watching this like interesting video. For those that like uh, sizual relationships of where one guy's like much bigger, taller and the other one's smaller, there's an interesting like retweet of a, what looks like a football player and a little gymnastic boy. Like that they're going to have sex in the hallway in the front door. But anyways, um. Oh my! Did you find the video? Um, no, not yet. Oh, oh my God! I found and it. he also reposted that damn video that was very quickly like, like it came and it went about the guy. <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> about the dude that was like freaking out of like the hotel lobby or whatever, and the police had to come take him away. And so the cops like shaking him down or whatever, and then he goes and he grabs his front area and he's like, And what's this? And the guy's like, My penis. <laughs> he has like a big hard dick that's like to the left. Oh, I see now. In the pocket area. Oh my god, it makes me laugh. Uh-huh. Yeah, never mind. Moving, Moving on. Moving <laughs> on into the links. Uh my link is to Queens of Adventure. Okay. Yeah, so so I've been, you know, on this D and D kick. Uh, so D and D Wizards of the Coast had their D and D live uh, stream this past month, a couple weeks ago, and one of a D and D one on the D and D Beyond stage, uh, they were uh, showing their counter builder that they've got, and they were having a little contest, and one of the people who were part of the contest building an encounter was the DM for. Uh, Queens of Adventure, which is Dungeons, Dragons, and Drag Queens. Dungeons and Dragons and Drag Queens. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you this. It is delightful. <laughs> <laughs> I love this show so much. It is crazy weird. Uh, I, some of the things go over my head because it's in draglish. Um, <laughs> And in fact, in fact, incorporated in their adventure, they have the language of draglish. Oh, my God. Uh, It is 
<laughs> super delightful. I mean, it, it, like just the last episode I was uh, listening to, um, they were like traveling over something and they had to like make a check to keep their wig on. It was, <laughs> it, it's, it, and it's really well produced because they have sound effects and everything. Like they even have a, a few other characters and like they have a war forge and they put like a, a, filter on it to make it sound more like robot-y machine-like. <laughs> uh, nice. The, the Warforge was named Chernobyl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's... Classic. Yeah, it it was... It's it's just a delightful show, so I I mean, you, you can <laughs> subscribe through it on your favorite podcast thing, but it's like queensofadventure.com if you want to see it. They've got a couple things on a YouTube channel, but they don't really have much there um, mm. because it's mostly an audio podcast and they do do live shows. Uh, and actually, this all started with drag shows in Seattle oh. where, where they actually played it. Uh, it is uh, the Dungeon Master is amazing. Um, it, I, I mean, it's it's just wonderful. It's, it's a delightful little thing. So. If you want something that's very gay and a little D and D, uh, and draggy, um, yeah, definitely it. check out Queens of Adventure and just just kind of like start at the beginning. Seriously, just start at the beginning and it, it's uh, it's it's just wonderful. Check it out. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to look at that later. Yeah, it's it's a great podcast. Oh my god, that sounds awesome, Damon. So in honor of Pride and the 50th anniversary of Stonewall, um, there is a little video, I think, by the History Channel called How the Stonewall Riot Sparked a Movement. And I just wanted to share this with you. It's a quick, like, quick and dirty, like, synopsis of, not synopsis, like, summary of what was happening during the 1950s when the riots occurred, what happened when the riots occurred, and kind of what it means Um the impact and legacy afterwards. Um, it's three and a half minutes. It's obviously not the full story of Stonewall, but it's a, a little bit to kind of get you enticed and get you interested. I believe either the History Channel or AMC, someone recently did a actual like documentary on Stonewall. Um, by the way, just don't watch the Stonewall movie that came out recently. Just Just put that on the shelf and like find like the real story just saying um there are plenty of other movies out there uh, <laughs> yes yes total fucking shade there totally fucking shady um but anyway um having to say all that um like pride is not you know we all know pride started with the riot and it's not necessarily started but it was one of those things where it was kind of the watershed moment that started a whole gay um, liberation movement, gay pride movement, and um, it's important for our history. So take a listen to this little piece and learn more as you um, get some information. All you baby gays, this is what you need to look at. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, Find out it's short it and sweet, so it's within your attention span, so you should be fine. Girl. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's. I just I thought it was kind of cute, so figured I'd share it with you guys, Mister Gary. <clears throat> so I have two things that I picked, uh, one of which is probably late technically. So if you're not aware, on Netflix they have uh, brought back, well, uh, not brought back. I guess they signed off on a new version of She-Ra. It's called She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. It's amazing. Yeah. It has a bit of a feel like Steven Universe, mm -hmm. only it's female empowerment of all these princesses. Uh, there are some male characters. Hordak is there. Uh, so like all the characters, the base characters that you kind of know. Um, but season one came out last fall. Season two came out back in March or in the beginning of April, maybe, I think. Mm -hmm. So I just got around to binging it the other night. Uh, I think it's seven new episodes. Each episode's about 20 some minutes long. And 
I'm super excited. It was very obvious that there was going to be a season three, the way season two ended. So, and I read online that, yes, there's a season three and it's coming out in August. I think August. Nice. So, um, I'm super excited about it because, like, I didn't watch the original really. Like, I watched some of He Man, but to be honest, I probably just watched He Man because. He Man. Well, yeah. And. <laughs> Beast. Um, and Ram Man. And, you know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> probably most Any other in your windows you could think of? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Fisto. Fisto. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I fisted as hard as I could, he man. Um, <laughs> that cartoon <laughs> thing just cracks me up. So, anyways, um, yeah, I uh, am super excited about that. That uh, So, if you haven't seen any of it, I highly recommend watch seasons one and two. Um, they've been doing some great, really great character building. I'm curious to know if season three is going to be the end because. Mm. The way the storyline is going, and as long as it took to get to where it goes, and it's obvious there's more to come. Um, I don't know. Like if if it if it does if it is it like a Steven Universe thing, and it can song, continues for years and years and years to come. I think there's plenty to work with, but there's very much a definitive like story arc overall of like beginning, middle, end. Like mm. so, eventually the baddie has to go away. I guess is the way I look at it. So I don't know what comes after that, but we shall see. So that's um pretty cool and uh those of you may know that damon and i have been over the years kind of like fanboys for todd Rick hall and he released a new album which he had been kind of like mumbling not really mumbling about but like kind of teasing and then i got the new album it's called house party part one it's seven songs six out of the seven are gay as fuck like dance anthem like type stuff welcome to todger K. correct um, <laughs> I, I mean there's nothing bad about that it's just no just be prepared for like if you want like a normal kind of pop album this may not be what you're looking for if you want like um dem beats if you want like like some booty shaking like house like stomping like clack my fan tell the world to fuck off while i parade around in my g-string at pride kind of music this might be (laughs) just the record um yeah so but uh, the seventh song actually is really sweet it's a ballad um and it's a lot uh it's it's nice todd you know todrick does some stuff it's i will admit it's very poppy like it's very formulaic so a lot of repetition and stuff, but I'm not mad about it because I really, really, really like the album. And so he started a new tour. It's going to be coming out this like late summer fall. Uh, so I might be going to see him maybe um, oh, around my birthday. Comes to me to see is Cleveland. Yeah, so that might be where I'm going to get to go see it. But yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to that he's back but i was gonna wait and then i was like no because it's pride month and y'all should probably like listen to it and then go see his i didn't like it but his newest video um uh nails hair hips heels it's yes it's talk about gay as fuck there's like 70 men with pearls gloves heels belts and fans you just have to see it nice nice hey guess what folks that's the end. Oh. But anyway, Scott text us. You pop over to our website. Comes out loud at com. Shoot us an email. Comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail. Six or otherwise at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. Put that in your phone so you can speed dial us. Uh, you can find us on various social media outlets, including Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and right here on YouTube. At Comes Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Join our Entourage chat where you will get the link to the live stream if we accidentally leave this un- unlisted. At tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can find out when we're recording these by subscribing to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can buy some merch over on zazzle.com slash cubs out loud, which we may be having some new stuff coming up soon. Um, and uh, you can get things like the shirt and that shirt and stuff. Uh, you can also uh, become a patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud where we got a bunch of stuff and I think we owe you guys something. 
which we may discuss later. Um, and you can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcast. You can find us anywhere in the internet. It says box that box, 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 got box, something or other. Damon? I unmuted myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites, or you can also find me there on Facebook under Theater Cup 79, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody! Good night, everyone! Have a good one, y'all. urinals go for it i love how like i was playing with my fancy music and literally dropped it and right as i drop it and make my um face that's when it transitions over to like the full on like comes out loud logo Mm. so i totally saw that i'm like fuck that's okay that's all right haha very funny phil i'll post whatever i feel like on instagram nice try (laughs) <laughs> people trying to guilt me to post it online <laughs>